Okay, so this video is entitled The Constitution. The Constitution was, um, you know, obviously created after the Articles of Confederation. We realized the Articles of Confederation was weak and we needed a stronger central government. So the framers or the creators of the Constitution met back together and they created the Constitution and they based it off of the idea of a, a series of uh, thoughts or ideals that they wanted to model our government after them. One of them was called popular sovereignty, and it's what our Constitution is based off of, and that's a government in which the people rule, and so the government have a voice in what they say. Now, the framers, or the writers of the Constitution, as I stated earlier, they wanted people to have a voice in their government, but they were also feared that public opinion may also result in bad decision-making. They didn't really trust the people, per se, so they set up this idea of republicanism, which means that people exercise their power or their right to have a say in the government by voting for their uh, representatives. So my vote or my voice is heard in my vote for who I want to go represent me in Congress and to the presidency and all the other levels of government. The framers and the United States, the framers of the United States Constitution wanted the nation and the states to also work together very well. And that idea is called federalism, in which a system of government in which power is divided between the government and the uh, smaller political units like our states or the cities, the districts, whatever the case may be. But they wanted them to share that power and they wanted them to, to do it well. And they set up the idea of federalism. So who has the power? We just talked about federalism in that the nation and the states both have power in our government under the Constitution. So who does that power fall to? Well, the framers were concerned that too much power might fall into the hands of a single group. That's why we were afraid to give the nation so much power under the Articles of Confederation initially. So we set up this idea of separation of powers, and the government was broken up into three separate branches, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. And they can all work together very well if everything runs smoothly. They also didn't want any one branch. They didn't want the executive, the legislative, or the judicial branch to have too much power. And that's where we have the idea of checks and balances. So each branch of government can exercise checks or controls on the other branch, meaning that you know, the president can veto a bill presented by Congress. The president can also appoint judges. The judges can rule um, that some of those rules passed by Congress are unconstitutional. They all have these checks and balances on each other. It's a way to keep control and share that power. And this just basically makes sure that everybody works together. There's also the idea of limited government. That means everybody must follow the set of rules defined within the Constitution, that idea of limited government. So nobody can become too powerful and consider themselves above the law. So now we're going to talk about the uh, Constitution itself. The very beginning, that first paragraph that starts with, we the people of the United States, is the preamble. Right? It defines the purpose of the Constitution, and it lists out six goals. Form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. All, right? All of these are the goals of the Constitution. And over here I have what they each mean. You know, it's a kind of normal day language. So to form a more perfect union, they wanted to create a nation that wanted to work together, that wanted to succeed together, that wanted to be successful. Establish justice, make sure the laws and courts are set up fairly. Ensure domestic tranquility, make sure that everybody in the country is peaceful and unified and we stay together. All right, provide for the common defense, protect us against anybody who comes after us. Promote the general welfare, contribute to the happiness and well-being of all people, make sure we stay healthy, happy, and we love living here and then secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity. It means that we make sure all these things we mention are for ourselves and the future Americans. So now we're going to break down the Constitution into the articles. All right, the first article is Article 1. If you notice in our song, in Article 1, we built a fancy legislature. See, I told you I didn't sing the song. Two houses in a legislative branch, the Senate, which is every state has two representatives, and the House, and that uh, representation is determined by the size of population in that state. The House has the power to impeach, which means it can accuse a public official of doing something wrong. So the House of Representatives has the right to say, hey, President, you've done something wrong. We're impeaching you. The Senate then tries those impeachments, and they have the right to remove that public official from their office. All right, and also the lawmaking process is very big here. And you, it's kind of hard to see, but if you draw, I've numbered it up here so you can, you can do it as well. But it says, number one, the bill is introduced by the House or Senate, and that's sent to committee. Boom, you go to number two. The House or Senate committee approves the bill, they rewrite it, or they kill it. All right, if they approve it, they rewrite it, and they send it on, it goes to the House and Senate to debate and vote on it. Then it comes down here, the House and Senate committee members, and they work out the difference between the House and the, the Senate, the difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. Then it comes to Congress. All of Congress must pass, or, or Congress, both houses have to pass the bill. And then two things can happen. It goes to the President 
who vetoes the bill, all right, or it goes to the president, and the president signs the bill. If the president signs the bill, boom, the bill becomes a law. If the president vetoes the bill, it can then go back into Congress, and with a two-thirds majority, Congress can overrule the president, as that checks and balance, and it becomes a law. So I want you to make sure you have this cycle down. All right, I would draw it, you know, if you want to draw in a big circle, draw it from the top, and you know, you can break down the branch when you get to six. But you basically have one, two, three, four, five major first steps. And you have six A, six B, six C, and then seven, it becomes a law. And that's kind of where we're at. So that's the lawmaking process under the legislative branch. That's what Congress can do for our nation. And notice, even within the lawmaking process, you have that checks and balances with the president and Congress. The president can veto a bill presented by Congress, or he can pass it. If he vetoes it, even Congress can overturn it. So now we're going to talk about uh, the president, otherwise known as the executive branch. In Article 2, the executive and his cabinet. All right, the president basically serves as a four-year term, and he serves as a number of roles, like you know, chief executive, commander-in-chief of the army, the chief diplomat. He does a, a bunch of things. And here's what's unique about our government. We don't actually directly elect our president. You see, when it was all set up, people didn't really, or the people that set up uh, the way we vote for our president didn't trust people like me to vote uh, without bias or concern. So they were afraid that you know, a, a unified public may make poor decisions, just like we talked about at the beginning. So they present this idea of the electoral college. And that basically means that each state has a number of electors, which is equal to the total number of senators and the total number of representatives for that state. And that's how many electoral votes we have in electoral college. So I cast my vote for whoever I want to be president. Once all those votes are tallied, whoever we have cast our vote for, so in this upcoming election, let's say the state of North Carolina cast all their votes for Bill Smith, a third party candidate, neither Romney or Obama. So then our electors get together and they would cast all of our votes for Bill Smith. So that's how it works. If our, if our state voted in the majority of Obama, all the electoral votes would go towards Obama. If they counted, uh, or if our state voted for Romney, all of our electoral votes would go towards Romney. So whichever presidential candidate wins the most votes in a state, the electors in the Electoral College turn around and cast their votes for that candidate for their state to win. So candidates basically need 270 Electoral College votes to win the presidency. And I know this is crazy, and we're going to talk about it later, but it's a very unique system. And it fits very well within, uh, because of the Constitution. Article 3, the, judici the, the Judiciary Courts. This is a tough word to say. All right, the Supreme Court obviously is the highest court in the land, but we know there's tons of other courts around it. They basically rule over any uh, cases that involve national laws, treaties, the Constitution, anything like that. All right, so that's the Judicial Court. Articles 4, 5, and 6. I want to go through this quickly because they're there, but they're, you know, they don't spell out the branches like the others do. Article 4 addresses the uh, citizenship of all uh, American citizens and the ability to add states, and it guarantees the guarantees for those states. Article 5 tells you how you can uh, make an amendment, how you can add it to the Constitution. To, in order to add something to the Constitution, it requires two-thirds of either House to propose an amendment, and then three-fourths of the states to approve or ratify that amendment and add it to the Constitution. That's where our Bill of Rights came from. So one of the Houses of Congress would propose this amendment, it would take two-thirds to present it to the states, and then three-fourths of all the states must then approve that amendment to add it to the Constitution. Article 6 says national government is the supreme law of the land. All right, This national government, what is set up in the Constitution, that is the supreme law. The states can't set up a rule or a law that is different from the national government. It's just not going to happen. All right, Article 7 said that nine states had to ratify the Constitution. That's why I kind of have it down here, because obviously we've already ratified the Constitution. We have way more um, than nine states now, but in a time when there was only 13, you know, you needed nine to ratify the Constitution. And so that right here, what we just talked about, is the setup of the Constitution that we're going to study this week. So make sure you take good notes, play this video back. It's a lot of information in a very short amount of time, and make sure you understand and come ready to ask questions and talk about it.